Coming to you straight from Indianapolis, a.k.a. the Circle City, this is the Taking Back You Momcast. The Taking Back You Momcast is a witty, authentic, and sometimes sarcastic podcast for millennial mamas who are in the thick of mom life. And I'm your host, Danny carter Iddens, wife, millennial mama, motivational speaker, and motherhood advocate. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Taking Back You Momcast, you guys. How you doing? I'm Danny carter Iddens. I'm with you today. I'm your host. I am so excited. It is finally December and you guys, Christmas is right around the corner. I am just so excited about this month. Our house is decorated for the holidays. We are counting down the days until school is out. Things are awesome. I've already made plans with um, all my friends and my family for when we're going to get together this month. Oh, I'm just like so excited. I can't even wait. But um, listen, if I could possibly be even more excited about something, then today is the day. I am. I could. I can't even believe it, but I'm even more excited for you to hear this week's episode than I am about Christmas, which is like crazy because I'm really excited about Christmas. But you guys, this episode this week, if you don't listen to anything else that I post on the internet, then please, for the love of all that is good and holy in the world, please listen to this episode. I am joined today by my friend Jenna Pfeiffer. She is a friend of mine from back when I used to live in Valparaiso. And you guys, we went to church together and we did a couple of Bible studies together. But what I need you to know about her is that she is one of those people where her energy is just like absolutely amazing. She walks into a room and she just grabs you. You can't even, you're like, who is this? I need to know her. I need to talk to her. Um, And when you listen to this interview with her, you will see why. She runs, her, her online presence is called In My Red High Heels. And you guys, she is just such a beautiful fashion icon um, in my life. I, I look at her Instagram and I look at her on Facebook all the time to see what she's wearing. She's a mom. She's a mom of two beautiful children that she homeschools, you guys. So just listen. But she, she's one of our people, okay? You know what I'm always telling you? Like, okay, this is one of our people. Well, she is one of our people. And I just cannot wait for you to listen to this week's episode because we are just, we started off with one topic and it just, it got good to us. And you guys, Guys, this was just like such a great time. I don't even feel like it was an interview. I really just kind of feel like it was two girls sitting down. We were talking, you know, sharing life and just, you know, being authentic and being real. So that's why this episode is called Be Bold, Be Confident, Be You, because we we just really talk about that how to do those things and I just think that you know at the end of this episode you are going to leave with some just like amazing nuggets from Jenna and I mean I did I got done talking to her and I was just like my mind I took me a couple of days um to you know like bring in everything because my mind was absolutely blown so here is our interview slash conversation because really that's what it was with my girl Jenna Pfeiffer and you can find her on Instagram at in my red high heels she is wonderful peruse her Instagram you guys I I mention it in the interview but I want you to go ahead and to like look pause this for like two seconds and look at her Instagram and see how beautiful um she is how beautiful just I don't know everything about I just love I just love her she's so much fun I will be back at the end of this episode to share a little bit more information about how you can get in contact with her how you can share this episode and how you can continue the mission of taking back you which is to help moms be great moms and more than moms at the same time all right I hope you enjoy this Sit down, get yourself a cup of coffee, because girl, you are about to get some knowledge dropped on you. I'm excited for you. All right. Talk to you at the end. Bye. Hello, hello, everyone. I am here with Jenna Pfeiffer from In My Red High Heels, and she is, tell us what you are. Like, tell us what you do. Well, hey, girl, hey. Hey. (laughs) So uh, my name is Jenna, and I am... In the business of helping women. So I do all sorts of things. I help women in business. I help stay at home moms. I help um, 
young college girls. I have so many people in my life that I help every day. And um, yeah, so that's kind of what I do. And she definitely helps me um, in the, <laughs> we, we, full, full disclosure, I've known Jenna for, gosh, I don't know, what has it been? Probably like three? Yeah, three or four years. Uh, yeah, about three or four years. Um, we used to go to the same church back in Valpo, and um, she's just one of those people I can tell you, um, I've all, I liked her energy. Um, and I've talked about it before on the show. I'm a, I'm an energy person. Um, and so when I like someone's energy, I'm always like, Hey, Oh, okay. I see. I see you. Um, so yeah, I asked Jenna to come on today to just kind of talk to us, you know, because I feel like her and I have a lot of the same, um, kind of goals, I guess we like to uplift women. And, um, like you said, you uplift women, college, college women, um, you know, moms. Um, and that's kind of, I'm, I'm in the mom, the mom arena. So I think, yeah, we do, we kind of have a lot of the same things going. Um, and so I was, I was asking her, she said, well, what do you want me to talk about? <laughs> and I told her, um, well, I, I would love for you to talk about <laughs> fashion <laughs> because I'm not good at fashion. Um, and Jenna is, so if you go, um, on her, I'm going to send you to her Instagram, which is just like at in my red high heels, look on her Instagram, you guys, it's like, it's beautiful. Um, it's a work of art and you will see what I mean. So you will see exactly why I want to talk to her about fashion. Um, because yeah, so hit it, hit us with your, like, what do you, how do you even do this? Like, how do you achieve these looks? Where do you get these clothes? What are you like, what's going on? <laughs> Well, okay. So a little background in just in why I tapped into that part of me so intricately, I guess you could say, is um, I grew up uh, very muted as a child. um, And the culture that I was in, um, being flashy or uh, noticed or anything like that was kind of not encouraged. And Mm -hmm. I've always been someone who's been drawn to color and patterns and prints and glitter and sequins and fur and all of the texture, like literally all of the different things, but someone who never felt like I could be expressive in those areas. Um, And about eight years ago, I started deciding that it was okay for myself to kind of branch out and tap into what I loved. Mm -hmm. So, so many people, so many women now I know will say things like, oh, I love that, but I would never wear it. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's literally the line everyone will say, like they'll be in the store and they'll be like, oh oh my gosh, I love that. And I'll say, well, you should buy it. And they'll say, but I would never wear it. And so there's this breakaway there. And I found that, you know, I had so many options out there basically everything that I would see in the stores, I would absolutely love, but I wasn't at the point in my life where I was actually putting them on my body. And Mm -hmm. I just kind of one day gradually made this decision that it was okay for me to do that. And I just kind of made that, that decision within myself. And then what happened was, um, this whole new thing was born because I, so I'm on the Enneagram, I'm a four wing three And if you know anything about that, it really is about being a creative person who Mm -hmm. likes to be original. And um, so at the time, I really wanted to start um, designing things for myself because I felt like I was being creative when I did that. So what I would do is I would go in my closet and I would start building outfits from what I had. So I wouldn't spend any money. Um, I would just go through and try on everything I had and pair it with different items. And, um, very quickly I found that it was very therapeutic for me. Mm, And then when I would be out and about, I noticed people loved it. So whatever I would wear, um, it could have been, you know, like a leopard print, with uh, black and white stripes. I wore that a lot. And so if I wore that out and about, people would say, or like a floral print with black and white stripes, people would say, um, oh my gosh, you're so cute. Do your thing, you know, and strangers, people I didn't know. And what I noticed quickly on was 
um, I was making this brand for myself without even realizing it. Mm -hmm. So I created a blog and, um, I don't have a blog note anymore. However, I create a lot of content, um, on my Facebook and my Instagram, but basically, um, I very quickly had people messaging me all the time because what I would do is I would post my outfit and I would just say, you know, like, this is what I'm wearing. And people would comment and say, you're so good at that. You know, like help us help me all the things. (laughs) So, I was probably one of those people. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened for me too at the time, um, uh, what not to wear was on TV mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, and I absolutely loved the show because I loved what would happen, um, towards the end when they would go to try on the actual outfits that they bought. And usually what happened at the end of the show would be the, the contestants and they would stand in front of the mirror. And Clinton Kelly would always say, how how do you feel? And almost always they would break down because Mm -hmm. for the first time in their lives, they could see their beauty. um, And they would say, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that every single time I would just be sobbing, like sitting in my chair. And I kind of started this, this fervency started up in me. And I was like, I want to do that for people. Like I want to. I want for women to know their worth and their value, um, just by changing shirts, like, and they being able to see themselves just because they've changed an article of clothing. So I think so many people, you know, when I first started, I had a lot of haters because they were, they would just be like, well, you're so into how you look, you know, like, you're so concerned about how people look. And I would have friends and say, well, I can't come because you're going to judge me on how I look. And that isn't the breakaway at all. The breakaway isn't me sitting back in judgment of how you look. The breakaway is you are feeling a certain way because of Mm -hmm. how you look. Right. And if you can understand that, then um, the joy that comes when you actually start tapping into that is just, it's just, it, it completely changes mindsets and it completely changes confidences and lives. So like I always say, um, you're known for what you wear and you are like, you know, um, you, you could list people off right now in your head. And when you list them off, you, you have them pictured in certain clothes. Um, it's just kind of like the name of the game. When you walk into a room for the first time, um, the people that see you, the first thing they notice about you typically are your clothes, which mm-hmm. you're wearing. Um, and unless you have like pink hair, then they're going to notice your pink hair, but there's usually something about you that attracts them to you. And that, that nine times out of 10 is your clothes. So there's really this like control factor that we have here. Where we actually get to control how people see us. Yeah. And we get to tell our own story in that and, and their interpretation nine times out of 10 is going to match the story that we're trying to tell. So it's really cool and really beautiful because you can be anybody you want and you don't have to, um, walk in a room and feel like you have to have a, a degree or you don't have to walk in a room and feel like you're the best mom in the room, the most natural, you know, crunchy mom out there, or you don't have to walk (laughs) in a room, but you can walk in a room with confidence knowing that what you're wearing says who you are. And, um, I don't mean like it should be labeled, you know, I don't mean anything like that, but I do mean that, um, so you're not telling me to run out and buy Gucci. No, 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 no. (laughs) That's what happened anyway. (laughs) Right. Like for me, for me, um, I, I can appreciate the quality of brands, mm-hmm. but I cannot afford brands. Right. So, um, right. like I, I could definitely walk in a Gucci store and live my best life. Like I guess, like, <laughs> be touching all the materials and, and, and just really, really appreciate that. But that doesn't mean that you can't walk in like a TJ Maxx and have the same kind of feeling when you go on, go to put on new clothes, um, or clothes that actually are made for you, fit you well, work with your, um, color, um, pattern, like your colors, like your eyes and your skin tone, your hair. Um, so yeah, there's power in 
in your clothes simply because um, people people notice and people react to it. So so basically what I do and I, what I started doing was I started personal styling like right off the bat and I would take um, people shopping and we would go and talk about what worked for them, what didn't work for them. There was a lot of instinct for me. Like mm -hmm. a lot of it came instinctually as far as like what fit worked, but I learned a lot from what not to wear, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, Kevin, uh, they would always say, um, the, the pattern, texture, shine. Those were the three that they would always say. And if you had all three of those, every time you put on your clothes, then you kind of, your, your outfit is complete. So, so what is that? What does that mean? I, so like, <laughs> like, I don't even pattern, know what that means. <laughs> the pattern would be like, um, making sure you have some sort of print. Okay. Visually, uh, print on yourself, on your body. So, um, this doesn't have to apply all the time, but the importance of that is when you wear prints, um, even if it's just like a scarf, like maybe your scarf has a nice, beautiful print, the scarf can just have like this, um, this distraction. There's something that happens. There's a depth that happens when you add a print to yourself and you really, what you want to be is a flowing object. You don't, when you walk in, you don't want to be, um, you kind of want to be 3d. You want to be abstract. You mm -hmm. don't want to be just there. Okay. Because what happens is your clothes move with your body mm -hmm. and like, let's say, um, you're wearing like dark wash jeans and a black tee when you walk in the room, which by the way, is what I have on today. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you walk in, you kind of just see the black shirt and the tee and, and everything else just kind of dismisses. It's not saying that they're, you're dismissive of a person, but you, the person's not standing out, right? Mm -hmm. There's nothing about mm -hmm. the person that's drawing you in. Um, unless the person is being, you know, really crazy. When you notice that nothing's happening, what happens when you wear prints is it's helping with the depth, depth perception, and it's helping with movement. Another thing when we add texture in that also helps with the movement. Mm -hmm. so you really want to be like a, um, a moving object. You want what you're wearing to kind of move with you. Okay. Um, and it, when you, when you do that, um, it just, those are all like equals, like just a successful, wonderful outfit. So like stay at home moms, right? Like say you're a home, a home buddy, you don't leave the house much. You're like, I mean, if I go to this, if I leave the house, let's go to church or I go to the store, like, mm -hmm. you know, there's not a lot of like places and opportunities to go. And one thing so many people have said when I've gone through their closets and said, oh my gosh, have you, you've never worn this. This has new tags. They would say, they don't have a place to wear it to. Mm -hmm. And that's a downfall with women is we think that we can't look nice unless we have an occasion or a specific place to go. And those two things right there take away the beauty and the, the wonderfulness of just being alive. Because where wherever you are in your life, like whatever you're doing, whatever where whether you're a stay at home mom who homeschools her kids, like I do, or you're um, a business mom or whatever whatever out perspective you have, you're still living your life, mm -hmm. and your life should still be lived to the fullest. So there's nothing wrong with wearing clothes to match that. If it's something that brings you joy, then wear it. Um, I was thinking about this because. Uh, I was noticing how, like, even when people go to church nowadays, they'll literally wear dark wash jeans and a sweater. Mm -hmm. So the sweater will be like caramel, caramel colored or like cream, cream beigey sweater. And they'll wear like these little brown boots. And that is the, that is it. That's, That's pretty their much pop. The yeah. <laughs> That's of their pop outfit. Their boots. Yeah. When they went to the store maybe the other day and they bought all kinds of different things, but they didn't put it on their body for when they were going to church. And, and that that's kind of what I've noticed in the breakaway is to try to change women's mindsets of you don't need a place. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a place to dress nice and you don't have to have um, like a particular event happening either. 
So what I do is I, I wear all my clothes and I dress for myself. I don't dress for the occasion. So most of the time when I walk in a room, I'm the best dressed person. Does that mean that I am wearing something really fancy and nice? No. It just means that my my outfit has intention behind it. And mm-hmm. it's not me just throwing on a jeans and a t-shirt and saying, well, I'm just going to Target. To me, when I get to go to Target, it's a fun day. So I'm going to dress according to how I feel. And that could be a number of things. That could be, be me throwing on my Adidas shoes and my Adidas yoga pants and my cute little like mom t-shirt with my denim jacket and like running over to Target with my little beanie on my head because I mm-hmm. always wear hats. Like that's a cute little fun little trendy look that's not I'm not wearing my sweats and I'm not wearing a stained t-shirt to run mm-hmm. in Target with. Um so like there's so many different things that we can wear and we can add into our wardrobe. Um but yeah, so that's kind of like the basis of it and the the why behind it is when you look good, you perform well in whatever mm-hmm. it is in whatever it is you're doing. When you feel good, you're immediately projecting that into whatever you're doing. So whether you're cooking dinner, if you feel good about yourself, if you feel um, beautiful, if you feel successful, if you feel like, man, you're the best cook out there, when you go to cook that meal, it's going to be 10 times better simply because of the kind of what forefronted it, you know, like what, what went before it. And that's kind of like, my goal is to just help women see that there's so much to this life and it's, and we need to stop waiting for occasions and events to make us feel beautiful. We can do that every single day. Yeah. And I agree with you because I feel like a lot of women, they think like, okay, well there's prom and then (laughs) wedding day. Right. Right. And then like, that's about it. Like, you know, um, who knows what we're doing all the other days. Um, and you know, maybe somebody, you, you go to somebody's wedding. So, but you can't look, you don't want to look better than the bride. So you kind of don't, you know, um, or maybe your husband's having a work dinner thing. So you throw on the dress that you've had for 10 years and, um, hopefully it still fits, you know, <laughs> that's like, I feel like that's kind of the story of my life. Um, and you know, I really like what you say about dressing for, you know, yourself. Um, yeah. Because I I think back to, you know, 1950s and they would show women like yes. vacuuming with like, <laughs> you know, pearls on. And on the one hand, you can look at that and be like, that's absolutely ridiculous. Who's vacuuming in high heels with pearls? But I mean, like maybe homegirl had to do that so that she could feel like she was doing something. I don't know, (laughs) you know, Um, so it's just kind of a different, you know, it offers a different perspective. Um, Well, you know, I will say if you look at history as a whole with fashion, we are this, you know, within this, uh, what is it, century, Um, within these like years, there's not been a whole lot of movement in fashion and it kind of has fallen off. Um, where people no longer care. They don't mm-hmm. even give a thought anymore to what they're putting on their bodies. But if you look back, just literally turn around and look at history, and history is full of amazing fashion. Mm-hmm. I mean, all through history, every era has has just intricate design and detail, and um, they almost always hit that marker of pattern texture shine. Like yeah. if you just look back and turn around and see it, there's so much there. And, um, I don't, I don't know when the breakaway happened, but, um, now it's almost frowned upon to be fashionable. Um, almost, it's almost like you're ridiculous if you care about that stuff. You know, right. it's almost like as you're frivolous or, um, maybe even you're someone who, um, thinks too highly of themselves right. because you put that effort in and, and that why, because you're doing what literally everyone's done from the beginning of time 
you're actually doing it. You're one of the only ones that's still doing it. Right. So I don't, I don't know why that happened. I don't know when that kind of negative undertone started happening with people who want to look nice, want to, you know, dress nice, want to, um, make an impression, you know, like mm-hmm. you say, dress to impress. Um, I don't, I don't know when the breakaway happened, but there's, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, right. um, there's nothing wrong with being the best dressed person in the room. I'm telling you, it helps you in every way because you are someone to be remembered. Say you're trying to get like a job or you're right. trying to get in with a group of people or a community or any of that kind of stuff. What happens is when you dress to impress, you walk in that room, they're going to remember you, the girl with the fuzzy leopard sweater and the pink pants, right? Mm-hmm. They're like, oh my gosh, yeah, you're the fuzzy, the girl with the fuzzy leopard sweater. Oh yeah, I remember you from last week. You came, you're the girl with the fuzzy leopard right, sweater, right. sweater and the pink pants. And you're like, you're oh so my gosh, right. yeah, you remembered me. And what happens is people associate you with your clothes and they say, she cares. Like they immediately start thinking about you in the fact that you care how you look, you care about yourself. They, they start seeing things that you, you've not even said two words to them. Mm-hmm. They don't know anything about you. And they've already formed an opinion around you based on what you're wearing. So of course you can take the negative context of that and just say there's negative things to that too. So say you just walk in a room and, and nothing, you know, you're just wearing random whatever. And say you're going to a job interview or a job fair or any of those kind of things. If you don't stand apart, how are they going to tell the difference between you and Susie over here? They're right. not. There's not any. There's not any difference. There's nothing. There. There are no markers in their mind going. Um, which one was that? The girl in the black sweater or the other girl in the black sweater? Right. Right. They're, they don't. There's nothing to differentiate between that. And we and used what to. Happened, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, just what happens is when they actually introduce and meet you, then they get to see like how remarkable you actually are as a person, but they already think that. And that's the beauty of it. Like the beauty of it is you are encouraging their outlook by the way that you show up. And so it is, it is helpful. And it is, it is beneficial, um, in, in every area. And again, that doesn't mean that you wear brands. It doesn't mean that you shop at high end stores. It doesn't mean that you have like a closet, closets and closets and closets full of all kinds of um, outfits. It doesn't mean that. It just means that you dress with intention. And um, that can be, you know, shopping from anywhere from Goodwill to Target to mm-hmm. TJ Maxx, you know? I know we used to tell, um, and something that we always would do for auditions and dance. Um, A lot of my listeners know I'm a dancer, Um, used to be a dance teacher, but we used to always say like, don't go to audition unless they tell you to, don't go to an audition in a black leotard, always wear a color, you know, uh, a brighter color, Um, or, you know, we would say put a pin, like if you can't wear anything different body-wise, put a hairpin, you know, something in your bun to make you um, you know, stand out so that when they're sitting at home going through all the girls that they saw that day who all look the exact same, they're going to remember you because you had like something sparkly, some sparkly pin thing in your hair. Um, so yeah, I mean that, that is kind of, you know, the, in, I guess in my language, (laughs) the dance language, I, I do, I see what you're saying about how you will stand out and you'll stick in their memory even without even, you know, you haven't said a word yet. Um, and they're already making, you know, decisions about you consciously or actually subconsciously without you even speaking because of how you present yourself. I really feel like that makes you more memorable. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Especially maybe even if you've not, you've not said two words to them. So for me, for instance, the other day, I, a couple of months ago, a month and a half ago, maybe a month ago, I went to a volunteer day with big brothers, big sisters. And there was a group of us and I met some people and then worked the rest of the day with other people that I didn't know. And, um, I went, I just went to another event this week for my business and I met this girl and I was like, Oh, hi, how are you? You know, and started talking to her and she was like, Oh, I met you. And I was like, okay, you know, I don't remember her. I I didn't even register her face in my mind. I had seen so many people that day and she's like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you were over at this booth 
blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. She had all of these facts about me when I, I don't remember saying two words to her. And, um, that just, again, that's just proof in the pudding of, sh- of saying like right there, right up front is you're giving them something to attach to when they go to remember you, when they go to think about you, you're giving something else in there. There's more space in their mind for you, um, f- for that. So I just think that that's, that's really cool. And just using that as an illustration and just saying, I mean, gosh, darn it. That day I was wearing like, um, I was wearing high waist shorts, my Adidas. I had a cute little hat on and I had a purple shirt on. Um, but my makeup was done. Everything was like different and everyone else came in like workout clothes and no makeup. And you know, like that's kind of how they all came. And, um, so am I saying that she noticed me because of me being dressed differently? I don't know that. Like she didn't say, that was the reason, but I don't remember her. It, right. It's kind of what uh, I'm saying. Yeah. I have yeah. no yeah. memory of her at all. And um, I'm going to tell you why. It's because she was one of the 20 that was wearing workout clothes and, mm-hmm. you know, like no makeup. And I just, I have no recollection to who she is. Um, so, so yeah. So the basis of that is to just kind of understand. Um, I like to attach God into this simply because. Um, you know, in the beginning, when God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, He created woman last, and woman is the finished product. Mm-hmm. Women don't ever come into that knowing, into their role, knowing the the value of their role. But we are the very last thing that was created in this world, and the beauty in that is Adam's reaction to woman was that was the most beautiful thing he'd ever seen. After he's just seen the world that God's created, after he's seen the Garden of Eden, after he's seen all the beautiful um, animals and species and everything that he's seen, what he declares to me the most beautiful is woman. And I believe that God made us for that purpose. I believe that we are made um, for um, beauty. And we we go through life and we diminish that beauty or we don't even um, think twice about accelerating it because we don't feel beautiful. And I think that's just a huge disservice to the reason we were created. We are the, uh, we are the like final thing that yeah. there's so much, if you just walked around knowing, you know, I'm the last thing God created. Like that's, there's so right. much power in that. So when you go to get dressed and you're deciding on the black sweater or the shiny sweater you just bought with sequins on it, cause it was on sale for black Friday. Hey. Why don't you take the <laughs> shiny sweater with your jeans instead of the black sweater and no, like, no, I'm, I'm the finished product. I am the final thing God created. He knows who I am. He says who I am. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to dress like that today because I feel that way. And I will tell you, you know, in the beginning, sometimes people, a lot of my clients have said in the past, people, people will come at you sometimes in a way that they're just like, they either come at you like, oh my gosh, something's different. What, what happened to you? And you're like, I just feel good about myself. You know, like I, I feel great. I feel real confident. Other people will say, you're not being real. You're not being true to who you are. They'll be like, you're being showy you're not being real, you know, like they'll just say that. And what happens is, um, if you're consistent with showing up for yourself every single day, that confidence and that consistency, they're going to have to eat their words Uh because they're going to see like, okay, wait a minute. Like, no, she's not being showy. You know? So when I first started, people would say to me, you've changed, Jenna, you've changed. I heard it all the time. No, this is who I've always been. I wasn't, I wasn't me before. This is right. Right. This is just me living my best life. And I freaking am excited about it, you know, like, and I, so guys now 
I like plan outfits every single day and I can't wait to wear them. It is, it is an opportunity for me to express myself creatively. I call it my art because I spend time thinking things through and figuring out what are, what are pieces that I've never put together before and how different can I make this look and how appealing does this feel for me? And then I, every day when I go to change in my closet, I'll pick something out and I'll, I'll decide, do I feel like this today? And then right. I'll pick whatever it is that I feel like. And, and, and I live my best life doing it. Well, and you know what? I, hearing you say that just sounds, it's so, oh, it's so good. Because that's literally one of the things I always talk about is how when, you know, you start following your dreams or you start going towards, you know, living your best life or, or whatever it is, how it usually takes, and this is like a weird, it's like a weird thing, but it usually takes the people who are closest to you mm. in your life, the longest mm. to get on board. Um, yeah. I always say it takes them a minute to catch the vision mm-hmm. and really, you know, that can be super discouraging But what you have to remember is that, you know, especially like with parents and like siblings and aunts and uncles, they have known you since you were a child, since you were a baby, like from birth in a lot of cases. And so they've known you a certain way and they've seen you be this way for, you know, several years, possibly decades. And then when you step out and you decide to do a new thing, whether it's, you know, um, change your look or start a new career or I don't know, go back to school or whatever. Um, it's hard for them to take you out of one box that they have you in and, Mm -hmm. you know, put you like, wait, I must create a new box for you because you no longer fit in, you know, the box that I had for you before. And I think, you know, you will get, and not even just in changing your look, but you will get people especially your family, especially your friends who don't get it. Yeah. And you, you, uh, you just have to know that I need you to know that I will tell you this, this is, this has nothing to do with fashion, but the first time I brought my husband around my very best friend, she ended up being my matron of honor. But the first time I brought my husband around, she, she, she told me, she's like, I don't know. I don't really know if he's right for you because he just doesn't seem like your type. And I told her, I said, well, listen, all those other people were wrong for me. You're seeing me for the first time with the right person, but you're just so used to seeing me with foolishness. You don't even know what to do. And I think that's, that happens in a lot of different areas. Um, You know, when you try to become in the, to quote Ariana Grande, to become what you really are, you know? Um, and I think it's hard for people sometimes because especially if you were part of a group and now you're kind of breaking out of that and now they're like, well, wait a minute. I thought we were ride or die. I thought we were, you know, we were frumpies, you know, or whatever, (laughs) whatever we were doing or, um, and then it's hard when you step out and you're like, no, I'm, I'm going to try this now. Um, But one of the things that, you know, I like about you, Jenna, is that you do this and you go on and you share what you're doing with people. You share your looks and more than anything, you bring women with you. So you're like, okay, this is, this is my look. And then you'll tell us how to do it. You'll tell us that you're like, full disclosure, I got this at Marshall's or I went to Goodwill today and got all these, like, you don't like fake the funk and you're not like, Oh yeah, no, look at these, you know, whatever, like all these clothes designer looks because most that's not what we're looking for. And, you know, before um, Jen and I started this podcast, we actually talked for quite a while. And one of the things we discussed was authenticity and just, you know, um, we're constantly seeking for authenticity. And I think that that, if you have that at the end of the day, you, what you wear, what you're trying to do, where you're trying to go in your life, as long as you're being true to like Mm -hmm. yourself, everything else will fall into place. It might be a little bumpy. It might be a little weird for a minute, but it's going to fall into place because you are being the person that God wants you to be. Yeah, I think you um you start to it starts come 
you'll find it comes more and more natural to you. Mm -hmm. And it'll feel like, you know, in the beginning, a lot of, a lot of times people that, that don't, you know, when, when, okay. Like, so when people say you're changing, you're changing, you're changing or whatever, um, you may feel like I'm not changing. I'm actually just speaking up for once, or I'm standing up for myself, or I'm telling, or I'm saying no, when I always say yes, or I'm, you know, I'm just making decisions now that I've, my, my insides have been screaming at me to make, but I've not actually been able to do it because I've been uh, afraid of what you think, or I've been, um, so wrapped up in how you feel that I've not allowed myself to lean into Mm -hmm. how I feel. And I've just kind of let that be forefront. So what happens is the more you stay true to who you know yourself to be, the more of a second nature it becomes. And when that starts happening, everything else just comes. Like you're saying, it really does. Because it no longer takes as as long. You no longer have to take think about it as much. You no longer have to be, um, you know, so specific in the beginning sometimes you have to like tell yourself no today I'm gonna say no today I'm gonna mm-hmm. say no yeah no. you do you but do once you, once you become once that becomes a habit once you once people realize and see okay she's not backing down from this this is this is a thing and this is what she's sticking to and this is what she's doing or this is who she is now some people say stuff like that well this is who she is now and that may not be fair that may be who you've been all along and you're just now showing that to others, but it will start to become so second nature to you. And there is so much, um, to when your soul feels whole like that, it just, there's so there, it's indescribable of how, um, Oh, what's the word of how it just completely washes over you and you're mm-hmm. content in it. You know, like there's, there's an opportunity then for you to be content in who you are because who you are is okay. And who you are is, was so in, intentionally created and designed mm-hmm. and intricately made that those pieces of you deserve places in this world. Mm-hmm. So like stifling all of that and not wearing the fuzzy sweater because everybody else is going to be wearing the, um, you know, caramel button down sweater, like all of that there's a place for you. Like there's just, there's always, always, always a place for you. Always. Right. Yeah. No, I, I love, um, literally I love everything that you, and that's why I wanted you to come on. Um, because I, you know, the whole mission for taking back you is, you know, I went from within, gosh, my first year of motherhood, I didn't want to leave the house. I was, I was afraid to leave the house because I didn't, I didn't know what the heck was going on. I was afraid of the world. I was afraid of what people would think of me. I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, then when I finally did venture out and, you know, I started talking to other moms, I felt like that was kind of an overarching theme for a lot of moms is that there was a lot of fear and anxiety and depression and, um, I also felt like we weren't really able to voice it for fear of what, you know, other people would think. And then on top of that, I I learned that there's a lot of moms who still had a lot of dreams and who still had a lot of desires in their heart that they felt like they could no longer pursue because they were, you know, mothers, wives, whatever. Mm. Um, And that just never sat right with me because I just thought, you know, man, most of us have our kids in our twenties and thirties. What the heck are we supposed to do for the next, you know, 50 years, 60 years? Like, what are we supposed to do? Um, and our kids are going to grow up and they're going to go do their lives. And at some point we have to remember that like, we are still people. Um, and one of the things I always say is that, you know, God put the dreams on your heart, knowing full well that you were going to become a mom. So that means that it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're supposed to stop with that Mm -hmm. just because you became a mom. That's, that wasn't the point. If that was the case, then you wouldn't have those urgings. You wouldn't have those feelings. You wouldn't have, you know, those desires. No, the point was, is that you're supposed to be a mom Mm -hmm. and you have something that you bring that is specific to you. Um, 
besides your children. Um, Mm -hmm. And, you know, and that's okay. I remember Mm -hmm. my grandma used to tell me, um, I would say, grandma, you really need to get a hobby. And she would tell me, well, you're my hobby. And as sweet as that is, and as, and as, you know, um, loving as that is, and she's my favorite person, you know, she's been gone for almost five years, but she's my favorite person in the world. I think about that now and I think, oh my gosh, another person, like you didn't have anything else that you wanted to do or a hobby that you liked or thing that you loved or dream goal, like, you know, um, and I, and I didn't want that for other moms. And so I love looking, you know, I love going to Jenna's Instagram and, you know, um, cause I'm, I'm not an, in, I'm not a, um, artistic person in the sense of clothes or fashion, but I'm definitely an artistic person. I'm a dancer, so I can appreciate the beauty mm-hmm. of, you know, what I see. And I just love the fact that she's, she's a mom. She has two kids. She has, you guys, she has a toddler. Like she's, she ain't playing with y'all. She has a toddler. <laughs> She's not like, you know, oh my gosh, I have a 10 year old. And like, they basically take care of themselves. Like she's a toddler and she's with her kids all the time. So these things that she's telling you, you know, her outfits, her look, she's achieving all of these things while being a stay at home mom who homeschools her Mm -hmm. oldest and she's a toddler, has a toddler. So it's not like she's just sitting around eating bonbons and watching her stories, you know, and getting (laughs) cute when she goes to the Target. You know what I mean? So, and that's what I want. I want moms to understand is like, it is totally okay to feel like you want to go out and, you know, do more. And, you know, yeah. the being, you can be a good mom yes. and be more than a mom. And oh, like, yes. <laughs> those two things are okay. It literally yes. is okay. Um, yes. I feel like I have so many women that will message me and be like, yeah, girl, that's the truth. And I'm like, okay, cool. What are you going to do? And they're like, uh, let me think about that. And I'm like, all right, well, we got it. We want to be more than moms. We want to be good moms. So we're good moms. We're already good moms because you're a good mom because you're sitting here trying to figure out, okay, I don't want to not be there for my children, but I also need to be who I am. So that already, you're already a good mom because you're already thinking about that. Okay. But what are we, what's phase two? What's phase three what are we doing how are we getting there who are who do you have in your life that's going to get you there um so yeah I mean I I invite you to you know check out Jenna's social media um and you know really just kind of like peruse look around see what she's got going on read her her content she has a lot of really good content that you know will make you feel (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no, um, and it's good because it's 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 authentic and it's real and it's not like, oh my gosh! After my third latte today, I just didn't know what to do without my money. You know, like you know, <laughs> you know, it's the real stories, real things that are happening to her, real life. Um, she's you know, real life mom, mom life, and she's doing things. She just told me what you were at a business thing last week. Was it? something for uh-huh. your business last week. Mm-hmm. So she, she's doing both. She's momming and she's doing business it, and it, it works. It happens. Trust me. Um, and if business is not your thing, cause I know not everybody wants to, um, you know, start a business. That's completely fine. But whatever your thing is like, go ahead, do it girl. Like do it. Yeah, whatever it is. I mean, it could be dancing. It could be taking a dance lesson. It could be taking, going and learning a new instrument, something you've always wanted to do. You know, maybe it's something that you just, some place you wanted to go, or um, maybe you want to learn how to, you know, maybe you're 40 years old and, and you've never really done your makeup before and you really would like to learn how to do your makeup because you really actually like that. Or maybe- Maybe it's um, learning a new craft for yourself and deciding, you know, that that's something you really like. Maybe you're someone who can sew and you haven't done it in years and you need to get your sewing machine out and just like start making something. Um, the best thing to do is, is if you don't know what to do, just start making something, start creating something. Mm-hmm. Because when you do that, most of the time that leads to, you know, what you really, what you really need need to do and need to be. And so many people think what you're, you know, 
what you just said about your grandma. Um, so many people think that their identity is attached to their role um, with people and your identity is you were, you didn't come out the womb being a mom. You didn't come out the right. womb being a sibling. Um, you know, you know, you didn't come out the womb. Like you, you, those things happened out after, you know, right. all of that right. stuff is, is after. So who you were created to be inside of the womb, um, those gifts and those, those things, those intricate parts of yourself they need to be tapped into mm -hmm. because they were put in you for a purpose right and that is not out in the world yet if you're not tapping into those things for yourself they're not they're not in the world and there's so much you have so much to give people and there's so much value to you outside of you um making sure that dinner's cooked and the house is clean and the children are alive you know right. like and, and there, and there is nothing wrong with being so content and happy and all of those things. Right. But, you know, yes. as Danny's saying, and as I have seen and heard and felt so many women, you know, by day four of motherhood, day four, um, year four of motherhood, they don't know who they are anymore. Yeah. They have completely lost mm -hmm. themselves in the process of, um, staying up all night with sick children, you know, uh, making sure that they're eating healthy and proper and, you know, doctor schedules. And, you know, there's so many things to being a mom. There's so much there to that. And you all are doing a great job at momming, but what are you doing for yourself? What do you have right now for you that's going to help you so that when your child does leave the nest, you don't lose yourself completely. You know, like, no, I have this thing that I love and I enjoy and I do. And this is a part of me too. Right. So yeah, there's so much beauty in that. I, I 1000% agree with that. 1000%. Yeah, no, that's, um, and, and like I said, that's kind of what, what I set out to do is to just what you said, make sure, you know, cause I realize if a mother does her job, right. Her kids mm. are like literally you're, you are, if you do your job right as a parent, your uh, client leaves you, <laughs> you know, like if you do your yeah. job right, you basically yeah. get fired. Um, yeah. And that's, you know, that's, that's how it's the job. Um, and so, okay, you know, you're going to get fired because you're doing your job right. So what are you going to do? What's plan B? What's, you know. <laughs> Yeah, the intro. Um, what are you going to do in the meantime, in between time? Well, I'm going to wrap this up because I mean, honestly, Jenna and I could probably go on and talk for like, <laughs> oh my gosh, oh yeah, we could yeah, talk for days because we literally we haven't actually spoken to each other in a long time because um, just like you know, life happens, and so we were catching up and we were like, oh wait, we we're supposed to be doing an interview. Hold on. <laughs> 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 so um but i'm gonna wrap this up just so that you know we can for the for the sake of our listeners but what is one thing that you know someone can do like let's say i'm i'm susie stay at home and like you said the only place i'm going is to you know kroger and the uh and to church what is one thing that i can do this sunday that I can, you know, put, put them, I don't know, my, my outfit that I don't have to buy. I don't have to do anything special, but what's one thing I can kind of like give myself a little, I don't know how to say it. There we go. <laughs> um, one thing is hard for me to just say like, oh, one she's like thing. I want lots of things. Um, okay. But I, I, I would venture to say that most women don't actually know what is in their closet anymore. Mm, okay. Um, and so the one thing, and then I'll have points under that. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, and so, then there will be caveats. <laughs> so, so the one thing would be open your closet door. Okay. Um, but look in your closet. And I tell people like, you know, do it when your child's napping. Like yeah. during nap time, start, start during nap time but kind of go through your clothes. Yeah. Women don't do that. They don't know what they have. They don't know what they own. Start 
going through and then figure out what fits, what doesn't fit, will not be fitting. And um, let it go. If it does let not it fit, go, it's fine. It's cool. It is fine. And it's okay to have like a goal outfit, right? Like we're like, oh, well, when I lose 10 more pounds, okay, that is, that is perfectly fine for you to hold on to. But if you're holding on to a wardrobe of that, you're just mm-hmm. setting yourself up for all kinds of disappointment. Mm-hmm. So I would encourage that. But then also like, um, if you have not worn it in a year, it needs to go. Mm-hmm. So if it's in your closet and it's just there, it needs to go. Stop holding on to clothes for sentimental reasons. Stop, um, stop not letting yourself embrace who you are right now in the body that you're in Mm -hmm. and decide that you're going to dress with intention. So when you go to go through your clothes and stuff, find something that you actually like in your closet that is intentional. And that says Sunday, I'm going to be the woman when I walk into church, they go, wait, who is that? And then they're going, oh, that's Danny. Hey, Danny. <laughs> and they're like, oh my gosh, Danny, you look so cute. Like, be, try to, try to be in that mindset, mind frame and mindset. And then the other thing I was going to say is I have a group on Facebook. It's called a stylist journal yes. and you're all welcome to join. I accept most members, um, like, and it is a playground for all kinds of like, um, insights on how to build looks and what to wear and what's happening now, like all of that stuff. So, um, if you would like to follow me, um, you can also join my Facebook group, a stylist yeah, journal. Sure. And I will put everything in the notes for this episode. So any links and all that, all the social media stuff, I will put that in the notes for this episode so that you will be able to find her and follow her and, um, join her group. Um, and then I will also, I think Jenna's going to do a blog post for us too. Um, somewhere in there, the hol- see the holiday is like, we're a mess right now, so we'll get there, but, yes, um, sure. yeah, I mean, we'll get there. So, but you know, for the next, for, for December, eh. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm one of those people like I work super, super hard, but then when it's time to like chill, no one will chill more than me. So I'm like December, <laughs> I'm trying to just go sit down somewhere. So I'm like, eh, yeah, I'll talk to you in January. It'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> like, my husband's like, I never met anybody who could relax with like such veracity because <laughs> I'm like, oh no, I'm not moving. Um, Till about like next Thursday, not moving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you need me. Um, but then I'm like, if it's time to work, like I'm in, like, let's go. But when it's time to not work, I'm also 100 on both of those fronts. So um, yes, we will, you, there will be, possibly we'll do like a new year. I don't know. New, I don't want to say new year, new you, because I swear if I hear that one more time, it's not a new you. It's you being yeah. who you always have been and yes. everybody else is just going to have to get on board. Um, you know, which is why I, I named my company Taking Back You because it's mm-hmm. not, you're not new. It's you, you're taking, you're taking the reins back. Um, Get it, girl. Because you, you don't, like you said, four years in, you're sitting there looking at yourself in the mirror going, who even am I? Um, I, mm-hmm. I, I asked one question on Facebook and it was completely random. I was just like, hey, I, sorry, my dog, I think, no, never mind. I thought my dog was in here. Um, but I asked a question that was completely random. I said, Hey, what would you be doing right now if you weren't a mom? And I expected all these like things like, Oh girl, I'd be in Europe. Girl, blah, blah, blah. Most people didn't know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what do you mean? You don't know. And like, I lit- I had a mom message me and I don't know her personally, but she messaged me and said, I'm actually really upset that you asked that question because I have no idea what I would mm-hmm. be doing if I wasn't a mom. She's like, I can't mm-hmm. even fathom the thought of like what I would be doing. And I was like, okay, well, you sounds like you got some work to do. And then we ended up messaging back and forth for a while. Um, because mm-hmm. I was just like, that's not good, honey. You got to have, yeah, you know, um, so yes, 
So thank you for being a, you know, good example for us, for, for the moms. So we can see that, you know, being a mom and, and like I said, I'm taking back you, I only have moms like this is so everybody that you're listening to every week when I bring somebody in, they're all moms and they're all doing the things. So there you go. There's no like, oh, she's not a mom. No, she is. So if she can do it, she can do her thing. So can you. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for having me. Well, thank you for coming on. I'm so excited. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. Well, have a great week. And um, I'm going to have some like following just like messages right after the end of this interview. And so stick with us to hear that. But I will talk to you next week. And I hope you have a wonderful start to your December. Okay. Okay, so like, wasn't that absolutely fantastic? Um, the, oh my gosh, she's just like such an amazing human being, you guys. Um, if you get a chance, please, please, please go on Facebook, go on Instagram, follow her, like her, listen to her. She is, I, I said this at the beginning of the episode, I'm going to say it again. She is one of our people. If you want to find her on Facebook, you can go to facebook.com slash in my red high heels, Jenna Pfeiffer. And if you need to know how to spell her name, Jenna Pfeiffer, then just check the notes of this episode and her name is spelled out on there for you. Or you can go on Instagram at in my red high heels. Also, you guys, she has a private Facebook group and I mentioned she mentioned it on um, the interview, but I want to make sure that you know that you need to ask to join this group because it is a really great I, it, I love because you know what it's so cute because she posts most of her stuff in the evening at night which is great because like it just really shows the the momness of her because she's posting you know when like the kiddos when she gets the kiddos in bed then she like does her thing and how many of us moms can you know totally relate with that so you need to follow that she gives us lots of good fashion tips a lot of good life tips she gives you uh, she has giveaways all the time and more importantly she's just so authentic and so real and um you know you just need you need to be a part of that group it's called a stylist journal and you can access it by going to her facebook page um which again the link for this will be in the episode notes of this show and you know what i just want to thank you so much for listening to you know this episode and to listening to our interview and i just really i just can't even believe like how awesome um you know, this whole mission of Taking Back You is just all the people that are coming into my life because of the vision that, you know, God put in my head. And I just, I just like still, you know, it takes my breath away. It literally takes my breath away. So listen, if you know of a mom who needs to hear what we talk about every single week, then please, by all means, share Taking Back You with her. Share this mom cast with her. You can do that by going on Facebook. You can do that by going on Instagram. You can share some links, throw some up. I would really appreciate it. And I know that they would too. I I think so. Like, I, I feel... Like, you know, this is a good thing for moms. And I just want to share, share, share. So please share with all your moms, share with the people who you know would really, really benefit from, you know, um, what we talk about each week. I hope you have a wonderful week. It's, like I said, December is so great. I just can't wait. Next week, we're going to talk about self-care in December. So because, you know, the holidays are here. Things are getting crazy right now. And we talked a few weeks ago about, you know, staying, you know, staying zen during the holidays. But I want to give you some, you know, some more self-care tips on what you can do. And listen, it's I'm going to help you out right now. It's not bubble baths and candles. So just for those of you who are like, oh, no, here we go. Bubble baths and candles. It's not bubble baths and candles. So you can you you can realize you're going to actually hear some actual self-care tips. And it's actually based on a talk um, that I gave a couple of weeks ago. And so I wanted, I, I shared it with those moms and with the moms at the talk and they were just like, oh my gosh, you need to, you know, you, you need to keep sharing this and you need to keep saying this. Everything you said is like the 100% truth. So I'm going to share what I shared with them. I'm going to share it with you next week. Enjoy your week. Have a fabulous Wednesday. And guess what, guys? I'll talk to you again next week. Bye. 
Thanks so much for listening. For more information on Taking Back You and the Taking Back You Momcast, visit us at takingbackyou.com. From there, you'll be able to follow us on social media, listen to past episodes, and learn all about the mission of Taking Back You. Be sure to subscribe to get future episodes. And from all of us at Taking Back You, thank you so much for your support.